So the US is poised to pass its third major spending package of the pandemic, a $1.9 trillion plan that President Biden has championed as a way to help struggling Americans. The Senate approved it on Saturday. Later today, the House of Representatives is due to vote on the Senate's version of the bill. The plan calls on the government to send out $1,400 per person to those who are on lower income. So that's anyone who earns less than $75,000. So will this be enough to boost the economy? Well, let's go live to Miami and talk to Chris Campbell, who's chief strategist at Duff and Phelps. Good morning and welcome to the programme, although it's not morning where you are. I am very well aware of that. So just tell us, from your perspective, how much of a game changer this financial stimulus is. Because is it a given that people go out and spend all that money or uh, will they be spending it on critical items just like food and getting by? In terms of help for businesses, you know, some industries have been, you know, taken out almost by this pandemic. What aid has been added by this third stimulus bill? this space. We're very familiar with that. Thank you for being on the program, Chris Campbell. Well, one of the unintended consequences of these checks going out to Americans is this story. Shares of GameStop, which you may remember surged over 2,000 percent in January, well, rose again Monday by some 40 percent during the trading session. This was on expectations that Americans, retail investors, may soon use those stimulus checks they're due to get to buy shares in the equity market. So other stocks favored by so-called private investors on forums such as Reddit's Wall Street Bets also rallied on Monday as well. Our tech reporter James Clayton was looking at this, looking into this for us in San Francisco. So there you go. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news. Well, let's look at financial markets right now. In Asia, you can see that they are all headed higher, not all across the board. I looked at other markets like South Korea. The Kospi is currently down, but we've got a bit of a mixed picture. Uh, there is optimism out there on the whole about the recovery of the global economy, the U.S. stimulus happening and what impact that will have for global growth. You can see, though, in, in the U.S., uh, tech stocks were hit hard again because the worry is if there is inflationary pressure. Interest rates do go higher. These overinflated shares uh, listed on the Nasdaq may take another hit in the future. So people selling out when it comes to tech. Now, the high profile delisting of the Chinese energy giant Sinook from the New York Stock Exchange begins today. And that follows an executive order by previous U.S. President Trump and effectively bars U.S. investors from directly investing into CNUC. Well, let's discuss this with Mariko Oi, who's in our Asia business hub. Uh, Mariko, with a new presidency in the U.S., we kind of forgot about this, but it's happening today, isn't it? Now, thank you. Mariko Oi in Singapore for us. Now, the UK may be leading Europe currently when it comes to the rollout of vaccines, but when it comes to recruitment, the UK is the least optimistic country in the region. According to Manpower's latest employment outlook survey, it's, it has the weakest outlook for new hires in 30 years, much worse than in 2008-2009. Uh, that was the financial crisis, of course. But the hope remains that confidence will snap back as the economy reopens, particularly for larger companies. Well, let's discuss this with Chris Gray, UK Director of Manpower Group. Good morning, Chris. So why is uh, there the least optimism in the UK currently when it comes to hiring? Do you think Brexit also had an impact on your results, given the timing of it? Brexit, most definitely. We're loving the hands over your shoulder. What, what colour are yours? <laughs> <laughs> I forget. It was a while ago. Could be wrong. Probably. Have a good Thank day. You, Thanks for being on the programme. Thank you. Stay with us here on BBC News still to come. Indi yes, we'll take you to Delhi very soon. But first, here in the UK, the Governor of the Bank of England is saying the long-term hit to the economy from the pandemic could be smaller than in past recessions. Detectives investigating the disappearance of a woman in South London say they remain open-minded as to footage. The Nightingale Hospital Network across England set up in the early... This is BBC News. The top stories... 
The main financial backer of one of the UK's largest industrial groups has fallen into administration. If you were watching us this time yesterday, we were discussing the specialist bank Greensill Capital, and it's the main lender to businessman Sanjeev Gupta's sprawling empire, which includes Liberty Steel. Now, the appointment of administrators to Greensill puts 5,000 jobs at risk at Liberty Steel and other firms. So union officials were already due to have crisis talks with Mr Gupta today. Well, let's unpack this further with Chris Beecham, Chief Market Analyst at IG. Good to see you, Chris. So as I say, we were talking about this story yesterday and discussing how uh, this could happen. What more detail has emerged since? them? How could a bank be so uh, exposed again now, today? Well, Does this situation and the fact that 5,000 jobs could be at risk here in the steel industry highlight that there needs to be better regulation of this so-called shadow banking? Yes, I think You remember it well, Chris. Thank you. Chris Beecham there from IG. Now, $2.8 billion, that's how much money India lost last year because of repeated internet shutdowns. According to a recent report, the economic impact in India was the worst in the world and 2021 hasn't started on a promising note either. We're getting more now from our business correspondent based in Delhi, Arunudai Mukherjee.